What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So it's been a little bit since I did a Flowify tutorial and uh, I wanted to talk about how to take a pattern and bend it along a curving face um, in order to use that to create different kinds of shapes. So if you like using SketchUp extensions, I have put together a list of my favorite extensions and where to get them that you can download at the SketchupEssentials.com slash extensions. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so for this particular um, video you're gonna need a couple different extensions and I will link to all of these in the notes down below but in this case you're gonna need the extension Flowify you're gonna need the extension Joint Push Pull by Fredo 6 and you're gonna need the extension Extrude Tools and uh, so let's go ahead and start off by just creating our pattern and so what I wanted to do is I wanted to start off and I wanted to create a pattern that just has some kind of repeating diamond shapes in it so in this case I'm not gonna make this super complicated I'm just gonna draw a couple different rectangles so like this and then I'll just draw lines from the midpoints on each one of these in order to create a diamond shape. And so I'll just take this diamond, whoops, and I'll use the move tool in copy mode to create a couple different copies. So just select your diamond, activate the move tool, click on this corner and tap the control key. We're gonna make a copy right here. And then we're gonna type in divided by, and then we'll say three, or let's try four. We'll type in divided by four and hit the enter key. That'll create four equally spaced copies between this point and this point. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take one of these and I'm just gonna make a copy of it over here. I'm gonna move it up so it's basically centered between these points and I'm just gonna scale it down a little bit using the scale tool. So I'm gonna have some larger diamonds and some smaller diamonds. And then we'll just do the same thing where we just create a copy and in this case, I'm gonna type in times three and hit the enter key. So that'll get me a series of copies of these objects. And now all I need to do is just go on top and select them, use the move tool in copy mode. And then we'll just type in times times nine probably. And then the other thing that I've just noticed about this is you can actually type in values. So you can set the spacing after you've created all of these different copies. And I may make a video specifically about this, but you can see how I can actually come in here and I can type in a value of 30 or 29, and you can see how the spacing between each one of these adjusts as long as I don't click on anything else. So I did not realize that it did that, but that's super valuable for spacing everything once you've created copies. And so the other thing I may do is I may come in here and um, I'm probably gonna erase out this last row because I want there to be a little bit of space before this end here. And if you really want this to be centered, you can either take all of these and kind of move them so that they're centered in here. Just make sure that you're moving them along this face. And so now this kind of has our diamond pattern that we're gonna bend. And so what I wanna start off doing is I wanna start off by punching a bunch of holes in this because right now, um, these are all individual faces in here and I could come in here and erase all of these individually, but that's gonna be kind of slow. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna use a little trick where I click or I double click in the open space. If you remember double clicking on a face, we'll select the face and all the connected edges. Well, if I hold the shift key and click and drag a box across this now, it's gonna deselect everything I had selected before, so all of the edges and that other face, it's gonna select all of these faces and I can just hit the delete key. So what that allows me to do is that allows me to take this object and delete out all of the faces that were in these holes before. And so now there's a couple different ways that you could do this. So you could either take this and thicken it and bend it that way, or you could um, leave it the way that it is, and then uh, you could use the extension joint push pull. And probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a copy of this and we'll just try both. So for this first one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the push pull tool and I'm gonna thicken this just a little bit. Um, we'll maybe make this like five inches thick or something like that. And I'm just gonna take that 
and I'm gonna make it a group. And we'll just kind of leave that alone for right now, and we'll make this other one a group as well. I may move it up, and then I'll leave it alone. Okay, so I'm gonna move it up. Now what I wanna do is I wanna create the face that I'm gonna bend this object along. So in this case, what I want this face to be is I want this face to be a series of curves. So, I'm just gonna draw a line like this. This is me roughing out um, the space along which this is gonna bend. And then I'm just gonna right click on this and I'm gonna divide this into a few segments. So maybe six segments. And then I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna draw an arc between each one of them. And it can be a half circle or not, depending on what you want it to do. It doesn't really matter. But then I'm just gonna use the rotate tool in copy mode to make a copy of this edge, and then I'll just use the move tool in copy mode to move this across, and I'll just type in times two. And that'll give us kind of our edge that we want to use here. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to use the extension extrude tools in order to extrude this edge so that it's a face. So I'm just going to right click on here and I'm going to find TIG's extrude tools and I'm going to find the option for extrude edges by vector. Well, what extrude edges by vector does is it allows you to create a face from an edge. Yeah, it's going to ask if I want to reverse the faces. I'm going to say no. It's going to ask if I want to explode the group. I'm going to say no. And so you can see how what that did is that took this edge and it extruded it in a direction or along a vector. And so I'm going to take this, I'm going to make a copy of it, just because we're going to try this two different ways, but I'll make a copy of this one over here. And so the other thing you may want to do is you may want to erase out your curves that are over here on the end. You don't necessarily have to do that, but um, you may want to. And so now all I'm going to do is we need to think about the way that Flowify takes input. Because if you remember, what Flowify does is it takes an object and it finds kind of a base, whoops, it finds kind of a base face. And then it finds the object that's placed on that face and it bends it along a target group. So we have a target group, which is gonna be this curved face right here. Now what we need is we need a pair of target lines in a group. And we need a base face. And so if you remember, the extension Flowify is very particular about the way you put your objects in here. So you have to have a base face a pair of target lines, and then your target face has to be, it has to have four corners. So in this case, this applies because we have one, two, three, four. But then your target lines need to be in their own group, your target face needs to be in its own group, and your base face needs to be in its own group. And these need to be touching just the way that I'm showing you right here. If you don't do that grouping right, it's not going to work. And then you're gonna leave a comment down below and you're gonna ask me why it's not working. And then um, I'm gonna tell you that your grouping is wrong. So just letting you know ahead of time, that's how that's gonna work. And so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna select these three objects and we're gonna go up to Flowify and we're gonna test that this is working. Okay, and so right now, the last thing we need to do before we can test this is we need to take these three objects and put them all in a group. So you can see I have one group here with three groups inside of it. So if you've done it right, if you click on this group and you go up to extensions, Flowify, impose grid, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a grid that shows up on this face right here. And one thing I'm gonna do before I do any of this is I'm actually gonna make a copy of this over here so that we can try this with our flat face. And so now all we need to do is just take this object and move it down so that it's on this face, and then we should be ready to go. So you need, this group needs to just have the raw geometry inside of it. So I have one group up here, and then I have my group of three down here. And so if I select both of them, then I go up to extensions, flowify, flowify, what that's gonna do is that's gonna take my shape and it's gonna bend it along this face, just like this. And you can see how what that does, if I move this off to the side, <coughs> is that takes all of those shapes and it bends them along this face. And so one thing you may notice is this comes in here with a lot of ugly extra unhidden geometry. Well, the way you can fix that is just going into the soften edges section of your tray and then just using the slider uh, and moving it to the right until your edges disappear. Don't move it so far that it looks kind of weird like this. Just move it far enough 
that all of the extra edges in here get hidden. And you may have to check this box for soften coplanar as well in order to get that effect. So you can see how that's one way that we can do that is by doing this uh, using the thicken shape. The other way we could do it if we wanted to is we could also take this flat face over here and do the same thing. So extensions, flowify, flowify. And then if you wanted to adjust the thickness after the fact, um, first of all, you'd still soften all your edges, but then you'd use the extension joint push pull by Fredo 6. And in this case, I'm gonna use a vector push pull, which will push pull this up and down, like straight up and down. Um, the joint push pull gives you some kind of weird results if you do this around the edges. So like down here, that gave me some kind of weird results. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use a vector push pull and I'm going to push the pull this up just a little bit. And that'll give me my thickness right here. So that's another way to adjust the thickness of your object, um, especially if you want to do it after the fact. And so the last thing we can do, and this is kind of optional, but let's say we wanted to take this and make it like some kind of parking structure or something like that. That's got kind of a slope to it. Well, what we could do is we could draw some support posts along here. and have them intersect with this face. And I would use an extension for this as well. And so the extension I would use in this case is I would use an extension, um, I'd use extrude tools again, but in this case I'd use um, a tool called extrude edges by vector. What I'm doing now is I'm just creating a couple different guidelines in here. And maybe before I do that, what I should do is um, rough out my shape. So I'm just using the rectangle tool to draw a rectangle centered on this object. And then I'm just going to create a couple copies of this. So I'm going to create a copy here, and then I'm going to type in times three or times two in this case. And then I'm going to copy it across a couple more times. Maybe something like this. Well, if you remember, these are all rectangles. Well, what I can do, because it can get a little bit tricky taking rectangles like these and making them run into a face like this and uh, be kind of smooth where they run into it. Well, if we use the... Uh, if we use the tool extrude edges by vector to object, so you can see I have all these selected. Now if I single click and I move my mouse along the blue axis, you see how I get red dots on the bottom side of this? That's because this will extrude this shape out until it intersects with an object, and then it'll stop my extrusion. So it's going to ask if I want to reverse the faces. I'm going to say no. It's going to ask if I want to explode the group. I'm going to say no. So you can see how what that did is that took these support posts that I created and it extruded them up until they ran into this face. So that's a really quick, easy way to add things like these support posts inside your models. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Have you been using Flowify? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.